Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today is all about novelty 35mm films and ranking my top five. And when I refer to novelty films, I'm talking about the ones which either alter the tone of your images or create weird effects. Not the kind of stuff you get with standard emulsion such as your portrait or your agvas. And I actually have never bought myself novelty film before. I've never really had a use for it. But between Christmas, my family buy me rolls of film, random rolls of film, and going to events and photo walks where you get given film, I've ended up trying quite a few of the novelty films out there. So I've put together my top five, and we'll start at number five, the first of three Lomography films to make it in, it's Lomochrome Turquoise. This film can be shot between 100 and 400 ISO, and according to Lomography, the warm colours become blue, blue becomes golden, and green becomes emerald. The first time I shot this film was over in Ireland a few years ago, and I was really impressed by it. Although the film did turn the sky this weird reddish brown, which I wasn't expecting, but by creating more defined tones of this building in the sky, the building actually stands out better. I also really like the shuttle colour shift of greens and blues in the images, with this image of the tennis court being my favourite. The only downside of this film is it's really hard to get a hold of nowadays, but if you can get a hold of a roll, I'd definitely recommend giving it a go. Now, onto my number four, Sunstroke, made by Double. It has recently been rebranded as Solar, it's not called Sunstroke anymore, but it's the same film. And now it actually comes with 36 exposures compared to when I shot it as 24. It's got an ISO of 200, which I shot at, and I got some great results. The idea of this film is to replicate light leaks with these bold red burns on the film. The results were actually a lot more consistent than I expected. Every frame I shot was affected by these fake light leaks. I shot this film when I was traveling in Bratislava and Vienna, and it's kind of a common thread with me and novelty films. It's the only time I really tend to shoot them is when I'm traveling. I don't know why this is, I think it's probably because they're more for personal use images rather than for projects. I think it really adds something to the images, and although yes I'm not going to shoot this for a project, I would shoot it again when I'm traveling. Now onto my number three, Lomochrome Purple. I shot this a couple of years ago in the beautiful Iceland. The film works best in bright conditions with a lot of green in the frame. So when we touched down in Iceland I was a bit worried as the northern part we could see was all covered in snow, but luckily the other half was a beautiful natural deep green landscape. The contrast created by the strong winter sun and the volcanic land was perfect for this film. I've also seen a lot of portraits shot in this film where this film can be extremely effective, especially when you've got some green in the frame or you're shooting out in nature. So onto my number two, and this is so nearly my number one. The only reason it wasn't is because the very first role of this film I shot, I absolutely hated it. And then from the second role onwards, I loved it. So that film is Lomography Metropolis. After a highly successful Kickstarter campaign to raise the production funds, Lomography brought out the first new colour negative film to the market for over five years, Lomography Metropolis. I recently made a video about shooting this film on a photo walk, which I'll link down below. This film is available in 35mm, 120 110 and 16mm formats, and has an ISO of 100 to 400. I shot it here at 400, but I have heard a lot of people say they get the best results at 200. According to Analog Wonderland, where I bought this film, it creates fine grain, deep blacks, and high contrast. And it really does. Although I've got to say, it's much more effective shooting it outside in natural daylight rather than indoors with artificial light. The result was very consistent throughout the role with muted tones, which works really well for street photography. I'm now really looking forward to trying it out in a different format, most likely 120. Now onto my number one. As I just said, it was almost my number two but I do love this film, and it's Volvox, made by Revelog. One of the reasons this is my number one film is because unlike a lot of novelty films, it actually does what it says on the tin. A lot of novelty films just don't live up to the hype or expectation or sample images. This film creates all these sort of bright green dots all over the frame, which really remind me of fireflies. If you shoot it in a dark setting, they're more visible with a stronger impact, and in bright light, the effect is a lot more subtle. I really like all the images I shot with this, both landscapes and portraits. I've also desaturated the images, which gives them another dimension to the effect. The effect is very consistent on every frame, so you can plan what you want to shoot knowing what kind of result you will get. So that is it, my top five novelty films. Volvox made by Revlog tops the list. Let me know what you think down below, what your favourite novelty films are, or what you've hated shooting in the past, because I know a lot of people have a sort of a love-hate relationship with them, especially as they can be pretty pricey. And that is it, I'll see you on Monday for the next video, which will be the first video answering your questions. I hope you like it, I've already got some really good questions in, and hopefully we can kind of create a sort of community where you guys can feedback and contribute in the comments, and feel comfortable to send in your own questions. So yeah, that'll be off on Monday, 4pm UK time, 11am Eastern Standard Time, 
And I think that's it. Stay safe, stay healthy. I'll stop moving my arms about and I'll see you in the next one.